a word for our listeners. Octung Cthulhu is set in the 1930s and 40s. We will be using terms and sayings from those times, including some that could be considered offensive. It is not our intention to offend. We merely wish to offer as accurate a view of the time period as possible. Welcome to Masks of Nyarlathotep, a Nerds Domain Gaming Podcast. Join us each week as our investigators uncover the corruption of the mythos in World War II. Starring George Chimbles, Phil Durham, Rob Walker, Justin Kimmett, Shirley Nedzwicky, and Scott Troiano. With Matt Quiet running the table as the keeper. Eldritch evils and crazed Nazi cultists await you just beyond this music. Hi everybody and welcome back to Nerds Made Presents Masks of Nyarlathotep. I'm Matt and I'm here with Rob. Have a great time. Jesse. Art. Scott. Art. Phil. Art. George. No Browns. <laughs> What a sad little announcement. And surely. All right. So you guys are on a ship. Uh, three of you are currently in a steerage. Two of you have rooms in first class, and Evelyn has joined the professor and Mr. October in first class to discuss things. Uh, the professor has written down a list of, or a, a, an explanation of what's going on and what you know about um, Captain Wilkerson. And uh, Mr. October, you are talking to your niece, trying to console her, right? Console her. Okay. The air quotes there, uh, you may not have heard them in his voice, but he, I assure you, <laughs> made those physically here in the room. Yes, Mr. Washington. Um, after um hour and a half, I would assume that I had my note completed. Yeah. Um. Uh, Mr. October, um, if I can have uh, your key, I think it wouldn't be inappropriate for me at this point to delete the room and I'll give you a key. Um, look, I don't think it would look awkward at this point, and then I can go to your room and then um, the release can have this room. That'll work. Alright, so you guys kind of switch rooms. The, you, the night goes by, the morning comes, there's a knock on the door of the question. Yeah, go ahead. Is he, are you not sending that note down to Steerage that evening? Yes. I thought she was hired all four that evening. Yeah. It would be kind of rude to send her back early. No, the note. Not no, her. you're sending the note down I, with the I'll guy. Send the note down. I assume the note went with her. Oh, no. oh, okay. All right. Never mind. My apologies, <laughs> Gary. Okay. Unless an idea comes to me. No. Okay. So the night, the, the night, because you wouldn't know anybody on the first floor, or on, in Steerage, except for the hot lady you saw earlier. I mean, I can send a, uh, another ship hand. This is I a... I think I probably send I trust it more. Yeah. This is a uh, high-class cruise, correct? Yes. Would it have a dark room? No. Or for dark? No, it will not. Okay. The ship isn't stable enough. And actually, when we're going to sleep, um, we're splitting a room, right? Me, yeah. We have our own yeah. rooms. Yeah. Me and the marshal. You're bunk together. Um, I'm going to pull some ointment out of my jacket and say... This is maybe embarrassing, but I need your help with this if you're skilled in first aid. Probably. Base is 30%. It's not kind of. I'm trained. I'll, uh. I gotcha. Thank so you. So roll a D3, but I just, I just took a while. Yeah. So, um, so the, the evening goes by. And what? Yes. Yep. Sure. Okay. The evening goes by. It's the next morning. There's a knock at the door uh, of the professor's original room, the room that he owns, but the professor is not in. I you switched to rooms. will hide. I can just lay in the bed with covers over me. You answer the door? No, I'm not answering the door. Not answering the door. Why not? Okay. Because this isn't my room. I'm not answering the door. You were paid to be is in the room. Is there an under the bed? No. There's no under the door. No. Bed. I don't know. Shit. It's bolted to the floor. I will answer the door. 
Uh, the deckhand hand looks strangely at you and then just shakes his head like he doesn't need to ask any questions. She's right over there. Not going. Uh, yeah, I, no matter. Is this, is this no, like well this, before breakfast? This uh, is my uncle. I'm staying with my uncle. I have no idea what she's talking about. It was a weird night. I'll leave. <laughs> <laughs> it is probably half an hour before breakfast to answer that question. Oh my god, it's on. Oh, so many people are going to die. Uh, <laughs> Mitch, Mitch, if you'll follow me. Did you leave the room? Oh, yes. You left? And he leads you back down to stairs. No, I grab like the like as many bottles of alcohol as I can find in the room, and I take them with me. So, did you have alcohol with you, Professor? Is, doesn't the cabin come standard with alcohol? No, <laughs> uh, no. They have an open bar. What would we have alcohol? In? Okay, fine. No alcohol in the room. Um. Yeah, I don't know that I would have to be drinking that much, but I thought I would get three different <laughs> No, I'm sure not. That's it. So, you, uh, you head back down the stairs. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Commander, you hear a knock on the door. Okay, well, <clears throat> I was resplendent to the fact that the ball and chain was out for the night, so. <laughs> oh, my God. I, uh, made, like, a bachelor pad, and it was just sort of, uh, So I get up, pants are hitched, no shirt. Yes? Your wife, sir. And he um, kind of gently... No, I don't. I go... I, like, I don't step into the room. I turn around and go to the cafeteria area. Thank you. You have a good day. Thank you. <laughs> he walks back up. To the, does he chuckle <laughs> like that? He seems, um, like, whatever. Not his problem. He doesn't have, you know, another few weeks on the boat with her. <laughs> Yeah, now that I know that she's back down in the steerage, I get your ass to come out to the main. You, you brought down the note with you, right? No. Oh my. <laughs> yeah, he I would have left the note in the room. Did, did you tell us about the? Did you tell me about? Yeah, the yeah. He said he was. I would try to give her the note, so she doesn't think it was her interview choice. You, you if purposely he tried to tell to tell me to take the note, and he wasn't going to own up that I was his niece. I would have looked it up and thrown it at. But you, but you know that's the information that the rest of the group needs to know. Okay. I'm being left to defend myself. No, no you're not. Your husband's here to defend you. Sorry. I just want to state real okay, quick so I that slide all down. of you people voted to give her a gun <laughs> and let her join this. this hey, she shoots trip. just fine. Not anymore. <laughs> she hasn't shot any of us. So I yes. slide, yes. I slide <laughs> up next to her along one of the long benches and say, "So, what information did you bring from the rest of the group?" They didn't give me any information. No, that that that's on. You're gonna need to roll persuade, and Scott will need to roll a psychology. You failed. Of course, I failed because I don't have persuade. Okay. You saw that roll. Uh huh. I read her like a book. Yeah, they gave her something. Okay. And the statement you just made was they didn't give me anything? They didn't give me anything. Well, that's obviously not true. Um, I don't have anything for you, then. That's true. Um, perhaps move this along. Um... At this point, Mr. Octavio would have come to his room okay. Okay. and found me. Absolutely. If she did, if she tore up a note while I was still in sight, I went back to my room instead of just walking out. But, um, upon learning this, I would have found the deckhand I paid. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I believe the uh, lady um, that was uh, in my room last night, I believe she has something of mine. Can you please take me to her immediately? Sure. Right. Now I'm a thief. Nah, he'll probably he, throw me in the brig. That's all right. He brings you down <laughs> to steerage, uh, to the uh, like cafeteria, uh, and um, sitting next to to Evelyn is the commander. Evelyn is clearly upset, and the commander, um, having Looks slightly consternated, yeah, having never been married, is kind of not sure the next step. So, <clears throat> um, 
Me, me, before you walk up to say anything, I lean over to Evelyn and go, do you at least need to get some sleep? Curious. Is a deckhand, is a deckhand nearby? Or did he yes. come down? Oh, okay. Um, I'm just wondering when breakfast will be served. Um, excuse me, sir. Uh, might I have a word with you? Regarding, uh, regarding, uh, last evening. I don't think I'm needed here. You gentlemen have an ice thing. You know how to get back to first class. Is that correct? Yes, I do. Thank okay. you. Okay. Certainly. And I stand up and move over to the side. Okay. So, um, obviously we have a plethora of problems with um, the shovel. And I kind of nod to the bench. Yeah, feel. I don't make any obvious uh, motions, but there's enough of a pause that you can tell that I'm not disagreeing <laughs> with you. Um, uh, the, uh, Mr. Um, is it, who else is in, around us right now? Uh, I would assume Carlos and the uh, Marshal are out by now, I would assume. But are there other uh, There's like two or, or three. Or, I assume that steerage, the steerage after would be a rather large area. Um, yeah. Are, are they, they are, I mean, like, are we relatively isolated? How, how, how yeah, are there, enough, are, there enough, are there enough people that we would want to step into my steerage cabin? They, there is enough background noise that no one's going to hear you. You're probably down by the uh, engines. Okay. Um, do I see, um, Gorp and Garlic? Yes. Um, I might give them this little head nod and see if they come over. If I, if that's up to them. Yeah, sure. Yeah. No. No. So just Carlos. I heard you. Have you been crying? And that's when I give the head nod to move over towards the room. I'm like, let's go. Yes. Look, you haven't missed you. I you. Let's go with Evie and Carlos. I guess. It was just a yes. Why? <clears throat> Um, I think somebody needs your attention. Yes, you do. Why are you no. crying? <laughs> no, I don't. Um, well, <laughs> and then she goes into this emotional rant about, you know, this, that guy was killed. I didn't get to avenge my friend's death and now I've been disinherited by my uncle who won't even acknowledge me that I'm his niece and I'm stuck down here in this god awful wasteland of a bottom of a ship and Colonel starts laughing at the end of it. Where was this this strong young woman I met at the beginning of all this? She's been replaced by this little girl. Who is too good to be with these dirty people down here, and who cries because a person is dead, Your honor has and not feels been that she end. is entitled to vengeance as if anyone on earth is. If you really want it, there's always more Germans to kill. They are the people who are responsible for this. I assume you guys are having this quiet conversation. Right? <laughs> he's, was, he's he's very okay. quiet about this. <laughs> you said there's more Germans to kill. I just want to clarify. Yeah, he's. <laughs> You're good. Everyone I know is dead. Everyone I grew up with is dead. My wife and child, not even enough left to bury. My body is so ruined that no one will ever have me again. But I'm not drinking laudanum, drinking alcohol, or retreating and fighting. And you have that choice too. You can find that strength and help us. Or you can go up up there with the rich people who are too good for the rest of us and cry and drink and kill yourself and then they will truly win. It's up to you. Fine. She just lays her head down on the table kind of softly. You probably don't feel well either. You're probably going yeah. through a little bit of withdrawal. 
Like, there's withdrawal, there's hunger, I've been up all night. He gives her a hard roll and leaves. Oh, okay. A, a, a hard roll. Yeah, he grabbed a bunch of hard rolls from the dining room. Oh, okay. Like you would. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah. Kind of. Take so, um, she was on it while she was crying. Washington, Washington and, uh, the commander, you have, uh, retreated to the steerage cabin, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, what I need to tell you is that, um, Mr. October and I have made, um, very, uh, Friendly contact uh, with uh, the Brit, uh, Amy Wilkerson, and um, we had dinner with him last night. Um, he recognized us from the hotel. He was very congenial about it. Um, so um, we had a long conversation. He seemed uh, very um, uh, <coughs> enthralled in our company um, and looked forward to more of it. So I think we're going to try to continue to engage him and get more information out of him. We're going to also see if we can get his wife to join us. She is ill last night. And if we can find an evening for dinner, which do seem long for about two to three hours, where he seems to enjoy them with his wife, and then we can have a room for that hour. We can try to let you know in advance if we were able to get out there, and perhaps um, you can arrange for some warm or, or some warmness to get into the room and to acquire the pieces that we can do. We'll need to know where, which room is his room, of course, first. We'll get you as much information as we can. We we'll need to not send notes through um, the previous party that we tried, and the party that was a deckhand or, or some other trusted source. So I don't want to try to do too many cases of people like that myself, but we need to do that in some occasion. So, <coughs> my previous plan that didn't, didn't work. No, actually. <coughs> Your previous plan gives us great pretense. How much money do you have on you right now? Give it to me. Um, I give whatever I have. It probably isn't very much at this point. Because uh, I probably don't care nearly as much as that. This drops over here. I'll handle whatever that is. And I'll say, um, I'll try to get more down here by handing you this drop over. No, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, I take the amount of money that he has, um, add whatever cash I have, double fold it to make it look like I can count it twice. Okay. Uh, I open the door real quick to look out and make sort of a show of poking my head out to make sure my wife is still at the bench. And I go, yes, and I hope fan the double thing and go, absolutely, and close the door again. Making sure that I'm seen by two, at least two or three people. I want, I want it to be relatively, like, poked okay. out, went back in, poke out again if I absolutely need to, okay. um, and close the door. <clears throat> Roll up for me. Good. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, what you came down here for this evening, it, it will work good pretenses. Um, Evelyn is not doing well down here in steerage. So you came down uh, last evening was enough of a success that you came down to ask that if she could stay for the remainder of the passage, I will then come and visit my wife to make sure she's okay, that you have proffered a large amount of money to allow her to companion with you for the at least a length of the journey, if not the whole thing. I'll see what I can do to make <coughs> sure that you are allowed up to visit on your wife. I know it's probably easier for us to come down there and speak. Un- understandable. I don't want to spend a bunch of time above deck, but I believe her spending that amount of time above deck would be of benefit to her. Oh, yes. I think what she's doing right. I think that getting her up there and as a training that we can make arrangements that she would fit in up there. You can, I think you mentioned that you like you can kind of check on her because I think that is what we need. Well, understandable. I don't want to over or abuse, but that would be an opportunity for me and for the other two gentlemen, for all of us, to come up during the dinner you outlined. Yes. At least as a pretense to see her, and then either on the way to or on the way back, we can then visit the room in question. Okay, I'll try to make those arrangements, and it will allow flow, the flow of information to be uh, much easier. It will help her out immensely. I have, am made of slightly sterner stuff. I can be in steerage for several weeks. I'm fine. I'll try to grease the right palms to make sure that you can get up around the right time. Lean on Mr. October's pockets. Oh, I have no problems. Okay. He's uh, getting recompensed. Excellent. Real quick, 
when would you be trying to steal these books as soon as possible? This is what, uh, this is, um, presumably at dinner tonight, um, we, uh, Mr. October and I would presumably run into Captain Olympus and Indiana Um, if, so the, the theft would not occur tonight. Right, but this soon. Would be, this would be presumably as soon as we knew reasonably that both he and his wife were going to be at dinner and we could warn the people in Sierra Children. <coughs> and you roll me an idea. Actually, the two of you roll me an idea. Would probably be beneficial to take place um, towards the first docking. That's what I was thinking. You want to be able to make sure that if you steal the books, you can get off the book. Uh, I, yeah, that's that's it. You you want to make sure that if you steal the boats, the books, you're not like stuck on the boat the boat because that might end up being a search. They may search the entire ship or stolen merchant or stolen items. You wouldn't want to be stuck in that situation, right? So um, we will do a lot of scouting and a lot of information gathering, but the actual um, execution might uh, take place closer to. Our first port call. Excellent. That's a that's a very good idea. Okay, then we will. Uh, <clears throat> then I will wait to hear from you, and we will go from there. I open the door back up. I walk out. Um, pat my wife twice on the shoulders. Kiss the back of her head and say, "Mr. Washington had such a pleasant evening last night that he has uh, asked for you to accompany him to breakfast this morning, darling." I'm fine here. In first class. I'm fine here. Is car? Are you still in the room? No. <clears throat> I'm fine here. And I take a big bite out of the hard roll that I have. They'll be serving breakfast here. I'll be fine, honey. Could you please accompany Mr. Washington? I would rather not. Do I don't I know why I come why? down here at all. And then I... Storm off. Okay. I defensively throw my hands up and retire to my cabin. I'm sorry, my steerage room. Why do I try? As a player, I, I, I like the idea, but I couldn't keep standing there as a no, character. I, I, I get it. I'm getting awkward. I have to leave. <laughs> do I not have a say in this? And I'm going to yeah, like that. Uh, well, well, no, so I'll, I'll your, just say it to Your character is doing appropriate actions. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good. I didn't know you flipped 180 from where you were. Yeah, they weren't part of They weren't even in the room for that conversation. But yeah, I know. I was so, like, I'm saving her. Oh, crap. <laughs> she doesn't want to be saved so, anymore. So uh, they serve you some, uh, like, biscuits and gravy, because that's cheap and filling. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you head back to your room? No, I stay out. I'm the dining room. The dining room. At our lavish breakfast, uh, I will <laughs> update Mr. October on what happened now. So... She's completely non-cooperative. Um, I would say that your niece is a uh, very complex woman. <laughs> I'm starting to feel like she'd have agreed with the marshal. She's becoming a liability. The uh, professor just continues to his breakfast and doesn't respond. <laughs> <laughs> it's the reason the professor isn't married. Because women are complex women. Yes, George. Excuse me. Um, I'm gonna go and start talking to like crew members. Okay. Like underlings. And I figure since it's it's a German boat, but that just means that you know the officers are German, but the others are just a mishmash of yeah, yeah. people who you, jump. You actually over. probably find a couple of Spaniards right. on the boat. So I'm gonna talk to you know I've got a smattering of languages and things like that. Basically talk to them, see how things are going. Talk about you know I'm a little interested in beginning to sit. You know what's it like? And I want to start looking at like. Hey, can, can you show me some of the engines? I want to take a look at them and do some jury rigor mechanical repair to like do some tinkering and kind of gain the trust of these people. And maybe they'll be like, oh, this is an okay guy. And Okay, so you've got like a week and a half between here and Nassau. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to forward it through a little bit. I know. Well, I know. I know. I'm going to give you first, before I do yeah. that, a chance for you to talk to the co- commander. And then I'm going to kind of forward it so that we can all get on the same page and move just a little bit forward. I would like to have at some point some way of contacting her to have a talk with her as well, even if I have to go down there. Okay. Uh, so one of you, yeah. So Evelyn eventually comes back to the room, eventually. 
So, um, upon entering the room, I kind of straighten myself as much as I can, even <coughs> the disheveled um, air that I have. <clears throat> I want to apologize to you, Commander. I look up for my game of solitaire. Oh, for what? For the way I have acted, I don't believe I have acted in the best interest of this <clears throat> mission that we are on. You need not to apologize to me. Being that you have a military <clears throat> mind and service, I would ask you, um, what do you believe my best course of action is with you from this point forward? I don't know. What what do you want? I would want to be a um, part of this team that can help in any way possible. No. And that would accomplish this mission. No. I don't think that's what you want. I think that's what you want me to hear. No, that's what I want. I disagree. Let me ask the question again. Because you've framed this to be hinged upon my military career. Your part of this mission <clears throat> makes you, because you have not had the military training, what is, in technical terms, called an asset. Being an asset, a, a, an individual who is brought on for a specific skill set, or a specific set of knowledge means that the individuals who work with you, who have the training and experience that I do, need to find the best way to utilize your skill sets and knowledge based on what it is you want. So, pardon my being abrupt <clears throat> and out of line. <clears throat> Um, but if I can be frank, turning me into a prostitute is the best way to use my abilities? No, but it got you upstairs. Where that actually wasn't, <laughs> that wasn't my call. That was Mr. Washington and your uncle, apparently. Well, somebody upstairs needs to fix their thinking. I believe they could have gotten their message to us in a different way. Agreed. I don't, I wouldn't be above such a ruse if that was the only option we had, but I don't think it was. Given that, I would not have picked that course of action as my first play out of the game. However, it's what happened. Therefore, in response, how you respond to that, the outlook that it gives you, and what you want are what are most important. You, you apologize for being blunt and crass and potentially out of line. You were all of those things when we admit, when we went to Tijuana, when we found, uh, when you volunteered to be the wife in this scenario to gain us passage onto the ship. You have a set of skills that are both useful and knowing. The idea of having you along is one that I've accepted. And barring the outburst in front of the late Miss Joanna, that I attempted to shield you from, barring that, you and I have a fine working relationship. It's probably not what you expected or what you wanted, but it is what it is. And in, in the field, these things happen. So I ask you again, what do you want? Do you want to remain here? Do you want to go upstairs? Do you, what do you want? Um, I would rather remain down here. Okay. I'm not seeing eye to eye with my uncle at the moment. He has basically disinherited me, so if I don't have an uncle, then I might as well remain with my husband. Fair enough. I would not rec I would also recommend that giving a swift slap upside the head to both your uncle and potentially Mr. Washington, I'm not sure who it was that came up with the original idea, would not necessarily be out of line. Well, being that that would be inappropriate for a woman, um, you would could do so. Either or. So how will we proceed? I don't know. Do we have any guns we need to polish? Well, we do. Uh, if, if you'd like to, that would be fine. 
Um, the information that I have from Mr. Washington is that they are planning to have the Brit and his wife, the Egyptian lady, um, out to dinner for a two, three hour stint, which will give us a window of opportunity to break into their stateroom, steal the books, right before we hit our next port of call. Well, that sounds... Well, is any of that in your wheelhouse? No, it's very... If you would know best... I don't know how you how adept you are at picking a lock. I have a lot of skills yep. in that stuff. I'm very good at history and occult and things of that nature. Picking a lock is not one of my Then if we got the lock picked, you'd be able to find the books that we are looking for and say, oh look, those three out of these 15 are the ones we're looking for. Oh yes. I'm okay, well the then that. likely we will bring you along and as inappropriate and potentially underwhelmed as we were with the thought of you being purchased for the evening, <clears throat> it will give us a pretense sometime in the future to get you above deck again. It is a, it is a tool to be used. If that will aid in our cause, I guess um, my honor doesn't matter as much as this mission. Well, and it's just what the people on this boat think. Of what importance are they? None, I suppose. Excellent. Then I'm going to go grab some breakfast, then I'll be back shortly. Is there a shower? Yeah, no. there's a community shower. Oh, ooh. There's, <laughs> a, there's a community shower. I'm I sorry. will wash up in the wash bowl while the commander is eating breakfast. And I and I lay out the guns that I have. If she so wants to clean them or play with them or do the Well, I won't <laughs> do anything until you came back. I don't clean them very much about them. Oh, yeah, I do. God, you do. Jesus Christ. So okay, so what's your uh Jesse, you said you were gonna try and make it down there. What's your pretense? I'm not a very subtle person. I'm gonna go check on the lady who stormed out to make I'm gonna check on the lady who stormed out of my out of the uh, professor's room to make sure she's alright. Because last night was a good loving. Oh no. No. No, you did that. <laughs> um Jesse, yeah, so you find a deck hand? Same deck in. This poor guy. <laughs> he's gonna have a great story. Yeah. 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 He's getting money every <coughs> Yeah, time. this is a good point. He is, is probably. Is that why he's staying outside? Because yeah, he's right. like, <laughs> he sees people. either of these two come out and he's like, <laughs> this people be crazy <laughs> and I can make some bank. Um, yeah, he, um, he, uh, when you explain that he would like to check on her, um, he says, uh, her husband and she and her husband have been getting along. I'm sure that I can have her brought up unless you want to go down the steerage. I would, uh, as much as I hate to go down there and dirty my shoes, I, I'm, I feel that would be the best option. I see. Uh, then he takes you down there. It's probably later in that, that afternoon after Evelyn and uh, the commander have been cleaning the guns. There's a knock on the door, Commander. I, oh, I will slip the guy a couple of bills. Sure. Are we still cleaning? Yeah, yeah. Uh, probably. Yeah. So we're. I would assume. I would assume that Evelyn guns has. Under blankets? Nope. You're more than welcome to have guns. That's not a problem. Oh, okay. Evelyn probably has her double barrel shotgun yeah. in her hand. Yep. Okay. I just kind of pull the towel half over. Okay. Just to and uh, I keep take cleaning with the. Take one of the gun. Take the uh, forty-five that I have and open the door. Peek out. And there's Mr. Rocco. How's it going? <laughs> no, no, I don't believe. I, I'm I'm going to chew the bellhop away. Oh no! He, as soon as you gave him a couple of bucks, I figured he just not be at the door. He's not. You no. Know, he's nope. Nope. He's good. <laughs> I've been better. You? I've been better. Is there any chance I could talk with the other occupant? No. You've been way better. better. Um, I open the I open the door and step out, closing the door behind me to but a crack. She's armed. Uh, I would be I would be careful. Please do me a favor. Do two things for me. Don't get murdered. No, go ahead. Choose your words wisely. And reconcile with your niece. 
Uh, Shirley, can you roll a set for me? I assume you said that slightly quietly. Yeah. But not quite, not quite enough that I'm trying to cut her out. Yeah. No? I got a 90. Wow. <laughs> You're really good at this. Okay, so... Uh, and then I open the door to let you in. I will walk in. How does your door open? Does it open in or does it open out? It opens, it opens in. in. It opens in. All, boat, all boat doors open in. I'll close the door and lean against it. Okay. Okay. I, I tuck my handgun like, into my waistband and go out into the main. Hold on, hold on, guys. guys. I tuck my gun into my waistband and walk out into the main area and have a seat at the table. Okay. More like I don't want you to storm out in anger. Before I have a chance to say anything. So, about last night. You do realize why we couldn't tell the bellhop you were my niece, correct? Yes, Mr. October. I'm trying to keep up pretenses. This is me practicing. I remember she's got a gun. You say that out loud. <laughs> Quietly under my breath. You roll a listen to him. Someone else give me their dice. No, 89. We can do it this way. It's one at a time. We can't blow our cover. Under all costs. And it hurts me dearly. I understand that now. This is not a game. We have already lost somebody that we know and love. I don't want to lose anyone else. Do you think I would forget that? She was my best friend. You forgot that with the bellhop when you tried to tell him you were my niece. He's a deckhand. With the deckhand. With the deckhand. With the cabin boy. I understand. That was a mistake. Okay. But I believe that whole situation could have been handled differently. You did not need to pose me as a prostitute, dishonor oh. me, and you could have sent a note down here. I completely agree. That wasn't my idea. That was completely Mr. Washington. You agreed with him. I didn't know about it. You were it. in the room with him. I didn't know about it until you were on your way. He had already sent the uh, I am your niece. Off. I am supposed to be a prized possession of yours. You're supposed to be looking after me. And a man who we don't know says, oh, let's turn your niece into a prostitute. And you're like, oh, okay. Kind of like when you agree to be another man's wife. I didn't agree with that either. This whole situation has gotten out of hand. And if you have stayed at home, this would have been a problem. She stopped reaching for some shells that are on the bed. I think you need to leave now. Maybe we can reconcile this later. I'll turn around, open the door, and slam it as hard as I can. I will make sure I walk by your commander. The commander. The commander. I'll walk by the commander. Yep. I try. It doesn't look like it's going to catch up and come quickly. Then the next opportunity you get, try again. Why did it not work? I tried to explain. How many people? There's like nobody directly around, is there? No. In the morning, when the uh, cabin boy came up to get us, I'm not sure if he told you, but you tried to tell him that she was my niece, and then was upset when I did not agree to that, and I left. Whose idea was this originally? It was a professor's. Yeah, you should tell him it was probably like his side of the face. I've seen that coming. Okay. Alright, I'll but see I, what I can I do. I just tried to explain to her how important it is that we keep our hairs. Understandable, but we also have a job to do. So, uh, the next week goes by pretty well. Surely, if you would roll a d6, or I'm sorry, a d3, so just roll a d6 so that I can have to roll it round up. I'm going to get a one. I get three. You get three hit points back. Anybody else heat har harm? Yes. Yes. Only if you're going to give us liver damage and bring in Wilkerson. No. <laughs> um, you guys have dinner with Wilkerson a couple more times. His wife does show up. Um, she is disconnected from the conversation. She's not rude. She just doesn't seem to share the same interest in conversing like he does. 
Uh, when when engaged, she talks back and holds herself well. But when when you ask Wilkerson or Will, when he starts talking about something, she just stops. She just quietly sits there. And eats her dinner, doesn't seem angry or despondent. Seems like a pleasant companion enough. Um, but you're trying so, to say he'll talk your ear off? Yeah, he'll talk your ear off, and uh, she just doesn't. Is so his I behavior the same um, in and out of her presence? Yeah. Yeah. What was your question, Shirley? Um, my question was, he, when he... I don't know who he is. Uh, the commander, uh, when he first told, told me... The commander, when he first told me about the plan, he said, the Brit. He didn't use his name. Is there any time where somebody's going to be in my present and yeah, roll, the person? Yeah, roll idea. And while she's rolling, has anyone told me oh. the name of the guy that you guys had dinner with? Forty one hundred eighty. Did, you know, a conversation. Did or did not? I believe I did. Yeah. Um, he said oh, okay. Person. Hold on. Okay. You said the bread. So oh, hold on. Okay. Yeah. So you vaguely remember the name Wilkerson, but you don't remember quite what it pertains to. You didn't talk much about it, other than he was part of the group. Mm-hmm. She didn't mention anything after that because that oh, would so make her sound. I wouldn't know. That would make her sound crazy, and that is something she tried to stay away from. Like he died and then came back. No, she didn't mention the coming back part. But she said that he died. Yes. Would she? But, she would have told me all about that adventure. Yes, but yes, but I you I don't know that you would necessarily connect them right away. Okay. So. I mean, because I'm going to say telegraph. Yeah, no, you not, wouldn't necessarily make okay. it right away. Your your thought? Do you, you had you had a you wanted to make sure you knew who it was? Right? Well, no, I just wanted to make sure that I was clear to have the information. No, that's fine. That's because even when I said they're going to go rob the Brit and his Egyptian wife, yeah, and then I would have said the Brit and his Egyptian wife because my there's no alarm bells for me for the name of the No, that's fine. Right. That's fine. I just want to make sure. Um, so during that time, uh. Jackie, or Jackie. Do it again. During that time, uh, Carlos, you spend uh, down there, down with the men, getting to know them, kind of com- becoming comrades. You play some cards, because they, they're all up for playing cards. Bet a little money, because you've got mm-hmm. enough in pocket change, and that's all they really play for, is, is really low stakes. Um, you help them with a couple of things when they're having problems with the engines, or this or that. You get in pretty good with them, um, and they're pretty friendly. Um, the guys up in first class, you have dinner with Wilkerson or his wife, on and off. You meet some other people. You're social. You drink. You There are a couple of dances. It's just a generally a pleasant um, trip. Everybody, what now? I only drink heavily when I'm prompted by Wilkerson. Yeah. I drink heavily every night. Okay. Um, uh, the rest of you down in first class, or in steerage, just... It's it's boring. I mean, there's not a lot going on. Uh, there's a couple of like um, Western novels that are passed around between the steerage crew that like somebody brought them and they've been trading them on and off. So you have access to a couple of fictional or uh, yeah, fiction books. Nothing great, nothing s- substantial, just something to read. Um, all in all, though, the trip goes pretty smooth. Well, during we- during that time, I'm going to try to identify. If I can, the two German, the two men and the woman who may or may not stand out, who may or may not try to just be on their own away from everyone else, I'm going to sit back and try to observe. Okay. Mm-hmm. What was, what, 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 what the other couple uh, is. Mind. When, when would you like to, man would you like to roll your um, um, idea? Give an idea, please. Yeah, go ahead. Roll an idea. <laughs> One of them's dead in an alley in Mexico, and the other two are having dinner with uh, your wife. Not not with his wife. No. With, oh, you're not with my uncle. Your uncle. With, no, with, with Washington. Yeah. I have no idea. You have no idea? Oh, okay. Yeah. No, because my understanding was there was another oh, German oh. couple. No, mm. there was another. They never said anything and about them being German, just going to Germany. So did you make that so assumption? So two German men and a German woman. Yeah. Oh. And the Fraulein and the nope. air were. Um, You've not together. seen anybody in stir- storage. There's steerage. Storage. Delaware. 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 Thanks. You, you're mostly with um, um, a few French, um, some Swedish people. No uh, other Germans, though. No, there's a couple of uh, 
what you would have to get, I guess, for Scotsman. But no, no, uh, Germans. I then that, that would lead me to think that the Brit and his wife were one and the other guy was dead. Yeah, mind. yeah, that's okay. very likely. But, well, because I was, like I said, I was looking for other German passengers no, in fine. steerage. Okay. I would request that the commander give me a special attention. Um, yeah, you, you, um, you make some friends among the crew, or the, among the other people, and kind of bargain your way into a sketchbook that somebody might have left up in their room in first class that just somehow came down here. Mm. Uh, uh, and charcoal is shoveled into the engines on yeah, a regular basis. Yeah. So, yeah, um, that's crazy. Uh, Mr. October, you notice that one of your sketch, one of your empty sketchbooks is missing like halfway through the week, but who cares? You have like four or five more. During the travel, I want to make sure I warn Mr. Washington <laughs> that I had it right in your mouth that it was his idea to, uh, Prostitute out my niece. Pretend prostitute. Pretend prostitute. I clearly understand. I was pretending. And I can certainly understand um, the difficult situation that puts you into. I would hope that our party members would recognize the, the value of it. The value and the intention and look past the... Uh, um, what it is on its surface, but oh, I do. I thought it was a good plan. I mean, they got her up here, and it worked just fine until she grew fit. Out, anyway. of, out of character, the position it puts him in. Got to sleep. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're a big boy. Yeah, <laughs> um, but I do want to question um, during this week. Um, um, as absolutely inconspicuously as possible, are we able to figure out what room Wilkerson and Weber say? Uh, roll luck between the two of you. Seventeen under something. Yeah, I made it as well. Yeah, you guys kind of narrow it down. Uh, there's not a ton of first class passengers, maybe eighteen or twenty, um, and there's not enough. There's not a lot of rooms. A lot of those are couples, so. Um, you you pick up on you know who's where and what whatnot. Probably walking back to his cabin one night while you guys are all drunk. Um, and then um, I think at some point I'm probably going to go have a conversation with uh, our favorite deckhand. Yeah. <laughs> Question. <laughs> yeah. Before he has that conversation. Sure. Through this entire time when they're whining and dining with Captain Wilkerson, does he ever? In an evening of hard drinking, does he ever look tipsy? Does he ever look drunk? Does he ever get not hammered? In fact, there is a night that he hammers back probably 20, uh, like three finger gin drinks, and he just, at the end of it, he, it was a great night, and that, and a cognac at the end. It was a great night. It was a pleasure talking to you. You two didn't keep quite up because you would have been plastered to the floor, and nobody wants to scrape you up. And he just stands up and walks away. Yeah, once I kind of realize that he is not getting as drunk as he should be, I don't necessarily try to keep up. You just I, I still drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, I drink heavily every night, so I'm okay. not that heavy. Not that heavy. Yeah, no, he he is clearly drinking, and he eats a lot of a lot of meat. You notice that he almost always orders it very, very rare. Limited information. Um, that kind of conversation. Yeah. Um, before we come into this uh, port of call, I'm thinking that um, I might have a rather special evening. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, I might want um, several people. Oh, okay. Um, so, if you can just, um, I'm, I think that I'll, um, have some notes sent down if you can just make sure that they're allowed to come up. <coughs> okay. Okay. You have very particular case. <laughs> husband, a wife, a burden victim, and just some stranger. <laughs> Carlos, I, I believe The deckhand is not going to question what it is I asked for, I don't believe. Especially when you pump, uh, October's money. Yeah, <laughs> do his hands. Um, Carlos. I'm presuming that Mr. October is not at any point going to question if I say hand more cash. 
I think your thoughts on the rich being a bunch of twisted sickos were more Mark than you thought. Um, yes. So you guys, you pull them up, and you plan, I assume you plan the heist. Oh, uh, I was more saying that aboard the heist. But that oh, okay, be, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, that, I mean, that's, that's perfect. I would assume that they would, you know, we, I, we might just pass um, somewhat of a coded note down um, with the room. Um, <clears throat> the room and the date. Okay. Um, is there any sort of pattern that they're following for when the wife shows up to dinner? She no, it's, regularly or? it's 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 irregular, although he does tell you the night before they hit port that she'll be up and they want to have a nice a nice long evening, which you you get the impression that the three hours is a short evening for him. Okay. Well, so yeah, armed with that knowledge, then I would probably um, send a um, somewhat coded note down and then okay. the set up with the deck in that that's also the night before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, after a nice long evening. You want another nice long evening, I guess. Okay. Well, and the good news is that'll do it tonight for uh, Nurse May presents Masks of Nero the And we will talk to you guys real soon. That will do it for us tonight on the Nerds Domain Presents Masks of Nyarlathotep. Remember, you can email us at nerdsdomain at gmail.com or find us on facebook.com forward slash nerdsdomain on Twitter at nerdsdomain or over at our site nerdsdom.com be sure to sign up for the newsletter while you're there. You can head over to iTunes and give us a five-star rating. We want to thank Josh Shop for our music. Don't forget, you can support us at patreon.com forward slash nerds domain. And check out our shirts at slashloot.com.